Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I'm now answering question number 14 from the October um, 2020 C12 paper. Okay, the C12 paper. This question is about sequences, which relates to the P2 syllabus now. Um, now, this question 14, part one, tells us about a car that has five gears. It says, given that the maximum speed of the car in first gear is 22 kilometers per hour, and the maximum speed at each successive gear forms a geometric sequence, we have to multiply by the same amount each time to get to the next term, and the maximum speed of the car in fifth gear is 130 kilometers per hour, find the maximum speed of the car in second gear, giving your answer in kilometers per hour to one decimal place. So you have five gears. You have the first gear, second gear, third gear, fourth gear, and fifth gear. It says the maximum speed in the first gear is 22 kilometers per hour. And the maximum speed in the fifth gear is 130 kilometers per hour. And there is a geometric sequence, okay, that takes you from one term to the other. So this is a, um, a geometric se sequence we're dealing with. Now, we know that each term in a geometric sequence is given by the formula a times r to the power of n minus 1, where a is the first term. In this case, that's 22. r is a common ratio which we don't know. Okay, r is unknown. Okay, we don't know. It tells us, doesn't tell us what it is. Um, and, but what we do know is we know that the fifth term is 130. Okay. So we know the fifth term is 130. So if we set that up using this, we can say, okay, the fifth term is going to be given by A, which is 22 times R to the power of five, sorry, five minus one, which is four. Okay, and is for the fifth term, N is going to be, N is going to be five. So the fifth term will be given by this. So we can say 22 times R to the power of, Four. This will be five minus one. Sorry. Twenty-two r to the power four is equal to one hundred and thirty. That means r to the power four is equal to one hundred and thirty over twenty-two. Now we want to find what um, the maximum speed in first. In sorry, we want to find the maximum speed in second gear. Okay, that's what we want to find. So we want to find what u two is. Now u two is going to be a r times to the power of one, right? Because it's going to be two minus one. So we need to know what R is. R is the fourth root of all of this. I'm going to leave it in this form. I'll leave it in this form and then I'll use that in my answer, okay, uh, for U2. So U2 is equal to A, which is 22, times R, which is the fourth root of 130 over 22. So that should give us our second term. And it says, give your answer to one decimal place. So it's, of course, it doesn't seem like it's going to be an exact value. So let's take the calculator and work out what it's going to be. Okay, so we have 22 multiplied by, now we're going to use the fourth root. So I'll use this button here. That's the fourth root. And we have a fraction here of 130 over 22. And that gives us 34.300. So 34.300, da, da, da. that means the maximum speed in second gear be equal to 34.3 kilometers per hour. One decimal place, 34.3 kilometers per hour. Okay, so there's the answer for part one of this question. Now we're going to go on to part two. Okay, well, now for part two of this question number 14. Um, here we're told that the first two terms of an arithmetic sequence are 208 and 207.2. Given that Sn, the sum to the first n terms, um, given that Sn is the sum to, the, to, to n terms, find the maximum value of Sn. So here we have the first term, which is 208. And the second term is 
point two. It's an arithmetic sequence this time, so it has what's called a common difference. Every time the numbers, they you have to add or subtract the same amount each time to get to the next term. So in this case, the common difference is going to be term two minus term one, which is negative 0 0.8. So that's why you have to keep adding each term each time to get to the next term. Now, it says Sn is the sum to the first n terms. We want to find the, val the maximum value of Sn. So as we can see, this sequence is going to keep getting less and less. So every time you're adding a number, you're going to add a number that's less and less and less. Um, eventually, the terms will become negative. If you have enough terms, you're going to start getting terms which are negative. So once you start adding the negative terms to the sum, the sum is going to start getting less and less. So the terms will keep on increasing. The sum of the terms will keep on getting bigger until you get to the negative terms. Once you get to the negative terms, the sequence will start to decrease. So you can say that the sum of the, the, maximum, the maximum value of Sn is the sum of positive terms. The sum of all the positive terms. So we've got to find the va maximum value of that sum. All right, so we know that the, um, the positive terms, okay, uh, will be the terms up to the term which is zero, up to the term which is zero, if there is a zero, okay, or the last term before the zero if there is no zero, the last positive term before zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to say let's try to find, we know that this formula here, un equals a plus n minus one times d, that tells me that any particular term. I want to find that term which has a value of zero. If there is one, if not, we'll get a, if we get a decimal, the term before that will be the one that's the last positive term. Okay, so we're going to find which term is zero. We know the first term is 208. We know that the common difference is negative 0 0.8. And we want to find what n is. All right, so let's just put this in this form. So we have 208 plus n minus 1 times negative 0 0.8 is equal to 0. I want to find the value of n for which this is true. So we'll have 208. If I multiply this, this is going to give you minus 0 0.8n um, plus 0 0.8 equals 0. If I rearrange this, I'll have 208.8. 208 208.8 equals 0 0.8n. So therefore, we can say n is equal to 208.8 divided by 0 0.8. That's the term, which will be the term which is the zero term. Okay, so we have 208.8 divided by 0.8. And that gives us 261. So the 261st term is going to be zero. So it's exactly zero. That means the, the, you know, that, that term will be zero. So if we go along the terms, the 261st term will be zero. So if we add the first 260 even the first 261 terms or the first 260 terms, we're going to get that sum, okay, which we need, which will be the maximum sum. Once I start adding the terms after the next, so for example, the 262nd term is going to be minus 0 0.8 because you're going down by 0 0.8 each time. If I start adding these terms to that whole sum, it's going to become less and less. So up to this point, up to, in fact, just before this, it doesn't really matter because you're going to add 0 for the 261st term. The sum of all these terms will be the maximum possible sum up to the 261st term. That will give you the maximum possible sum. Of course, 260 and 261, there will be, if I, add, if I add this term as well, it's going to give me the same sum. All of these added up to there or up to there will give me the same sum. All right, so it really doesn't matter which one I'm going to use. So I can, I can say that the sum that I'm trying to find, I'm trying to find the sum, let's, let's use 261. Why? Because... Um, you know, it's an easy number zero there because I can use the formula Sn. There's two formulas I can use. N over 2 times 2A plus N minus 1 times D. Or I can use a much simpler formula which is based on this, which is N over 2 times A plus L. Now, if I know the last term, this is much easier to use, of course, than that. And I do know the last term because I can, if I'm taking N as 261, all right, I want to find what that is. If I take n as 261, then I know the first term is 208. I know the last term is 0. If 
But if I took n as 260, then I would have to put the last term as 0 0.8. But it's much easier to use, use this. So the sum of the first 261 terms is 261 divided by 2 times a, which is 208 times plus 0. So you end up with 261 over 2 times 208. Okay, so let's take out the calculator. 261 over 2 multiplied by 208. And that will give us the sum, which is 27,144. 27,144. Okay, so this is the maximum value of Sn. That's the answer there. Okay, if I start adding the terms after that, I'm going to start getting less. As I said, I could, I could have also used 260. Okay, if I had used 260, then it would have, it would have been uh, 260 over 2 times, and I have the first term is 208, but the last term would be 0 0.8. That would have been the last term if I'd used 260, and you see, hopefully, that gives us exactly the same answer. It doesn't matter which one you do. This is easier, I think, because you've got a zero there. So there's the answer to part A of question number two. Now for part B. Part B says, hence or otherwise, state the smallest possible value or the smallest value of n such that the sum of Sn is less than zero. So now if we start adding all those negative terms, Eventually, the sum is going to become zero, and then after that, it's going to become less than zero. Now, as zero is one of those terms, zero is one of the terms. It's kind of like this is like a symmetrical sequence, you could say. All right, the 261st term is a zero, the 260th term is 0 0.8, the 262nd term is negative 0 0.8. All right, the first term is 208. So we want to find. Um, which term is going to be basically negative 208 and the term after that will be the n that we want. n will be the term after the term that's negative 208. Why? Because if I add the terms from 1 up to negative 208 together, up to, uh, up to this term here, which we have to find, if I add them together, I'm going to get 0. I want to find the sum which is first the smallest value of n such that the sum becomes less than 0, which is this value of n here. So this is like that value of n minus 1. That's the value of n, which will be negative. This will be the sum that is 0. So I need to find what that value is of, of this, okay, which has this as its term. So I can do this in a few ways. I can do it by using some logic. I can say, okay, from the first to the 261st term, okay, I have you know the sum of 0. And then from the two, I have to have another 260 um well another 260 terms added to this so if i do 261 plus 260 terms that's going to be 521 terms because i i need another 260 terms on this side i've got i've got 260 terms on this side i need another 260 terms on that side plus this term that's going to be altogether 521 terms up to this term. So this is the 521st term. So we know that n is equal to 522. That's just by using kind of some sort of symmetry here. I'm sure I could also do it by saying, let's find what this term is. Let's find what un plus 1 is. What's that term? It's going to be the first term, which is 208 plus n, okay, which is our. Um, it's a plus n minus 1 times d. There's going to be plus n. n is going to be, um, this is n minus, this n minus 1 we're looking for actually. n minus 1 plus, this is going to be n minus 1 minus another 1 times negative 0 0.8. So we're looking for, um, we know this, this term has to be minus 208. Okay, that's going to be that term, n minus 1, okay, is equal to 208, and you're going to have plus n minus 2 times negative 0 0.8. Let's see if this gives us the correct answer. So you have um, basically minus 208 equals 208 um, minus 0 0.8n 
plus 1.6. So we're going to have minus 209.6 equals 208. Okay, um, 208 minus 0 0.8n. So what happens here? When you subtract this, you're going to have minus 0. Point, you're going to have 0 0.8n equals 208 plus 209.6. So let's work out what that is. 208 plus 209.6. That gives you two thousand. That gives you basically 417.6. 417.6. So we can say that n is equal to 417.6 divided by 0 0.8. Um, so we're going to have, this is capital N. This is capital N, by the way. Okay, so we're going to have here um, divided by 0 0.8. gives us 522 same answer that we got before okay so this is an algebraic way of doing it where we say okay we want to find what term is it that gives you negative 208 okay so we said neg negative 208 is the is the term before the term we want okay we want the sum to be less than zero there the sum will be zero the first term with the sum is less than zero will be that term all right so we did, we said n minus one minus one okay because it's the term is a plus n minus one times d our n is n minus one Okay, that's a common difference, and we worked out what n is from this. It's 522. Okay, so the hence way is using, I guess, what we just did. And the otherwise way is using this. Hence is just like maybe using the symmetry like we did. Either way, we get the same answer, 522. So there's the answer to question number 14. Um, other questions from this paper of uh, October 2020 can be found in the playlist that should appear here. Other questions about sequences and series from P2 in, this, in the playlist over here, you can subscribe to the channel by clicking on this link. Any questions um, that you want to find from other types of uh, papers like P1, P3, P4, S1, M1, whatever, can be found in the link in the description. Also, IGCSE work, you can find um, some links there for those. Thank you for watching and see you soon.